Good time of the day. This is an asynchronous presentation of the paper Adventures of the Good AI Schweik, How a Book Personage and Construction Grammar Can Help a Machine to Understand Ethics. My name is Denis Kiselev, and this paper deals with machine ethics, or to be exact, with the so-called explainable AI, or XAI principles. As it appears to me, such principles concentrate upon the machine algorithm rather than the human implementer of this algorithm. So uh, the paper proposes a practical checklist for both the machine and its human maker. In other words, the paper proposes not shifting attention from the human nature to the machine. In making the proposed checklist, I used not only my experience of research into natural language processing, but also examples from uh, literature and uh, science fiction cinema. I used those examples because, as I have come to know, such things as greed, laziness, and fear, in other words, ingredients of selfishness are pretty much the same in books, movies, and real life. That being said, contents highlights are the dream of the hackable brain, the selfish human versus selfish AI, Heschek's Schweik and unselfish AI, and on implementing an unselfish AI, a construction grammar example. By Heschek Schweik, I mean the personage Josef Schweik from the novel Adventures of the Good Soldier Schweik, written by Yaroslav Hasek. Um, the checklist proposed in this paper is largely based upon character traits I uh, have found in this personage. And by a construction grammar example, I mean an example of how my uh, computational implementation of construction grammar can follow the checklist proposed in this paper. Throughout history, humans have proved to be intellectual rather than physical. So rather than uh, using the physique, uh, such as your teeth and muscles, you would use your brain to uh, make tools that improve your life conditions. Historically, such tools range from fire used to warm a human dwelling to AI used to manipulate shopping tendencies. This kind of manipulation highlights another kind of use uh, for uh, the human brain. I'm talking about using someone else's brain or mind for your own benefit. I found um, a good example for the desire to do so in a poster, actually an advertisement poster on a wall inside a train in Japan. This is a poster advertising a contemporary book and um, as you can see the English title or subtitle is How to Hack Their Brain, Priming for Seduction. So uh, the purpose of brain hacking in this case uh, appears to be seducing somebody. Although this, um, you know, kind of purpose uh, sounds rather pathetic to me, if you translate this advertisement from Japanese, it looks like over 200 million viewers are interested in um, seeing this or actually a video version of uh, the seduction know-how on social media. Uh, moreover, uh, the advertisement says that the seduction approach has to do with a well-known university. The seduction uh, know-how actually suggests first understanding or looking into the brain or mind and then hacking it. 
So the mentioned popularity of uh, brain hacking on social media uh, may speak in favor of calling peeking into and or influencing someone else's mind a tendency of uh, the modern society. It might be also interesting to answer the question, uh, how does this tendency work in AI? Well, my purpose uh, for this talk is not causing any kind of argument or aggravating any kind of concerns. I'm just asking questions and uh, give examples. So let me give you another one. Uh, suppose a uh, PC uh, user has a welcome screen um, on the system start startup. Uh, the welcome screen is actually a vivid picture of a seaside resort. Also suppose that uh, the screen has clickable areas with questions like want to know what this beach is called. Um, I'm talking hypothetically with no reference to any existing businesses. So a click uh, takes you to the answer uh, for that question, as well as a not so short list of hotels and transportation options with only for you prices. That clicking AI can be summarized as consumption control through shopping suggestions. It is also commonly known that uh, statistical AI is currently uh, the most popular. It's more popular than um, reasoning or, uh, well, human-like uh, AI. So my question is, uh, why statistical AI is so popular nowadays? Uh, one answer is that its popularity may come from popularization of some corporate research. Again, I'm talking hypothetically without any reference to real life businesses. I mean uh, corporate research into turning decades of experience as a world search engine into AI used for all purposes? Well, to me, uh, statistical AI works pretty much like, like a probabilistic search engine. It collects, say, users' chats, emails, etc. And uh, instead of reasoning about some answer, it retrieves the answer from, well, uh, the collection of chats or whatsoever. Uh, in other words, from the collection of answers that uh, have been already given. Another answer to the question why statistical AI is so popular is, well, maybe because it is easier to implement. I mean, it is easier to implement automatically crawling, let's say, social media, retrieving big data and extracting, well, various things from it, such as uh, words, uh, word counts and uh, their uh, features, appearance, information. Uh, it looks to me easier than um, implementing deeper understanding, such as, let's say, understanding by using uh, human knowledge or common sense uh, databases, such as uh, WordNet or ConceptNet. However, uh, as long as deep understanding is not uh, implemented, statistical AI uh, may continue kicking back with uh, understanding inaccuracy. As for instance, one can see uh, in, well, automatic translation, the more complicated is a sentence, the more gibberish the translation has. In science fiction cinema, AI is usually more sophisticated than in real life, so it kicks back on the human even harder as has been shown for decades. Uh, the first movie I uh, would like to talk about is called Westworld. It is made in 1973 and it is about a theme park that offers peculiar entertainments. One entertainment option is to shoot and uh, kill humanoid robots that look exactly like Wild West Cowboys. However, uh, one day robots 
um, actually start ignoring their algorithms and uh, kick back on humans by shooting and killing them. Another movie is called Ex Machina, uh, 2014. It is about a head of a uh, world search engine company. And it turns out that um, the search engine is used to capture world information traffic to figure out how uh, humans think and to implement that in AI. Well, capturing the information traffic sounds familiar if you recall uh, the hackable brain dream uh, from uh, the previous slides. Uh, the AI or a female uh, robot turns out to be uh, sophisticated enough to persuade a human uh, to help her escape. While escaping, the um, uh, droid stabs, uh, perhaps lethally, it's not clear from the movie, stabs her um, human creator with a knife. So I wonder if that kind of behavior is learned by the AI from the captured information traffic or from the corporate um, AI implementer. If you compare AI in real life and in uh, science fiction cinema, uh, you can uh, conclude that the more sophisticated AI becomes, uh, the more dangerous it gets uh, for a selfish human. To paraphrase, maybe it is too early uh, for a selfish human to be able to make sophisticated AI. So my answer to the question, what should be called selfish AI, is a selfishness checklist for AI, its makers and users, proposed in this paper. The first item on the list is overemphasizing user satisfaction or putting user interests above those of others. In real life, this can be seen in the so-called selfish algorithms used for um, self-driving or automatic cars. And um, in science fiction, this can be seen in um, an animated film called Wally. -E. In that film, AI makes human life so easy that humans become obese to the point of inability to move. Item 2. Utilizing AI to control the user, mind control in general. Well, in real life, the mentioned consumption control through shopping suggestions, and in a SEF uh, well, please recall the notorious matrix. I don't think I have to talk uh, much about something that everybody or almost everybody knows. Uh, three, offering an underdeveloped product in order to faster obtain financial and or other benefits. In real life, uh, this can be seen in uh, the mentioned automatic translation gibberish. And in SF, uh, well, please recall the amusement park robots that shoot humans. Fortunately, item four, capability of AI to put its interests above those of others, has more to do with uh, science fiction than with real life. An example is the notorious uh, Terminator. To give um, the gist of this list, or to shortly answer the question, uh, what should be called selfish AI? I would say that a selfish AI is an AI made for, by, or to resemble a selfish human. I guess the proposed selfishness checklist is pretty much in line with um, 
the so-called uh, FAT XAI principles. Uh, FAT stands for Fairness, Accountability, and uh, Transparency. Uh, these principles can be found in um, contemporary research into uh, explainable AI. However, as has been said, the aim of the proposed checklist is not shifting attention from the human nature to the machine algorithm. So let me just read out uh, the questions on this slide. What is your favorite human friendliness principles for AI or less selfish and less lazy humans? Or would you perhaps go for a good combination of both? How about another question? Uh, what can fake and unselfish AI have in common? In my opinion, unconcern and pragmatism. By Schweik's unconcern, I mean less worry about self-protection and less self-interest. And by his uh, pragmatism, I mean world knowledge unfiltered through excessive self-protection and self-interest. Schweik's unconcern shows throughout the book, even uh, to the point of his eager acceptance of something like uh, the possibility of being torn to pieces by an explosion at war. Now, Schweik's pragmatism uh, manifests in the fact that he's a living collection of all sorts of stories, starting from those about his neighbors and uh, ending up with those uh, on philosophical or religious uh, subjects. One of his uh, knowledge pieces is that you should be patient and keep your work done. In the case of my computational implementation of construction grammar, Implementing unconcern refers to adequately describing the meaning structure and not focusing on faster to implement shallow understanding or statistical AI. Construction grammar offers very good opportunities to embed situation roles that can be found, for instance, in Fulmore's deep cases or Johnson's image schemas into constructions. So, for instance, for a Heschek's ethical concept, charity is good in novels, but is lunacy in prison? By propagating the containment knowledge from uh, the preposition construction for in uh, throughout the construction network, it is possible for my implementation to computationally answer such questions as where is charity good and where is charity lunacy. It is also possible to extract respective factoids from text. Implementing pragmatism consists in collecting knowledge through deep understanding, which has been just exemplified. And um, by collecting knowledge, I mean extracting text parts with uh, specified situation roles, for instance, a door, an instrument, or a place, and storing a world's facts, which could be, well, a world's ethics, depending on what text uh, the implementation is uh, used on. Now, a challenge in um, collecting knowledge is making databases of two types. First, reusable constructions for text understanding, and second, world facts understood by means of those constructions. However, a large enough uh, database will make possible for a computational CG to learn from new text on its own. Details of my computational implementation can be found in uh, my previous research that I quote in the presented paper. To round up, uh, there are three simple conclusions. If you choose to invest more unselfish effort in deeper natural language understanding, for instance, in uh, rule-based reasoning or construction grammar, your AI can get smarter and more useful. A selfishness checklist for both AI and the human is proposed, and uh, the reader of the paper is invited to develop on the checklist, perhaps by adding more items to the list along the lines of unselfishness. Thank you.